It's just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Dr. Kara Maloli, who started her career in counseling with within mental health. She was hired into an executive director role where she discovered leadership excited her. After marrying her dentist, David Maloli, in 2002, their adventures continued in Europe while Dr. David Maloli served as an army officer in the dental corps. Kara worked as a civilian contractor for the army in Germany and with the VA while living in Italy. When David was done with his military career in 2007, Dr. Kara joined the founders team and served as chief knowledge officer of EQ Mentor, a professional development company focused on mentoring and emotional intelligence. During this entrepreneurial venture, she completed her Doctor of Management in Organizational Leadership from the University of Phoenix in 2009. Congratulations on that. That is amazing. <laughs> in search of a more European way of life, Karen David moved to the Vale and Beaver Creek Resort area of Colorado in the fall of 2009 to start a dental practice, Vale Valley Dental Care. They grew, their family grew by one on May 2010 with the birth of their son, Bennett. Interfacing with dental patients and realizing their remarkable response to heartfelt care inspired Karen to create a workbook, Where is the Love? The 52-Step Dental Practice Customer Care Makeover System. Um, email me the link to that, and I'll push it out on social media today. That'd be, that's Thank good you. for everyone. In 2012, Kara began working with the Vail Leadership Institute, now called Vail Center. She hosts a, a mastermind group, leads workshops, and facilitates retreats. In the summer of 2013, Dave and Kara started the Relentless Dentist Podcast, and I was the lucky guy to be David's first guest. And when he asked me to be on it, I had no idea what he was even talking about. I had no idea what a podcast was. <laughs> and uh, on November 2013, Kara, at 39 years old, had a major health incident and suffered a stroke while at David's dental office. Luckily, she was found by David in his admin office, and she received two stents in her internal carotid artery at the hospital in Denver. She is so proud to be a stroke survivor and able to speak again. In 2016, Kara decided it was time to match up leadership and dentistry. Leading Dentist is her podcast, and she just completed a new online course, Being a Dental Boss. Man, you don't look like a woman who had a stroke. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you. You look amazing. No. Uh, but um, I, I'll tell you, you know, um, I've said this so many times, I shouldn't repeat myself, but it, it seems like we were all led to believe that if, if we went to college and we learn calculus and physics and chemistry and biology that it'd be the keys to the universe and we, we'd be the kings of all this information and then you realize that after i'll be a dentist 30 years this month that i never used any of that stuff one time and the keys to the universe is actually figuring out how to get along and play in the sandbox with all the other monkeys and the the monkeys are the greatest thing in life i'd hate to be born on earth the only the only sapien on earth. So, you know, the humans are the greatest thing, but they're absolutely the greatest source of all your stress and problems. So, I mean, what you, Matt, what you got a doctorate in is 10 times more important than uh, math, chemistry, physics, and biology. Do you agree or disagree? I agree with that. You know, it's funny because I have my counseling degrees and I'm sorry, my master's degree is in counseling and then I do leadership. So they're a lot the same. But it's more, I think it's more about using your heart and your head at the same time. And they, and you have to use it pretty much every single day with the people that are around you, no matter where you are. And you know, when I, when I talk to dentists, they're, they're, and I say, what keeps you up at night? It's, it's never their bonding agent. It's never their root canal technique. It's either the staff or the patients. I mean, this morning, even on my cell phone, my phone's been lighting up with this, uh, this guy having a blowout problem with his office manager and you're reading this stuff and you're just thinking, God, that's gotta be the worst pain. It's gotta be, you know, it's crazy. So how, how do you, um, the, the dentist, it's natural selection. You can't get in dental school unless you were the nerd who sat in the library and got A's in calculus and physics and chemistry. If you were the well-rounded person in a fraternity and all that stuff, you probably never would have got in. So dental school, med school, law school attracts all these introvert geek engineer scientists. And then yeah. they come out and they have to be a people person. How do you how do you get them to have a doctorate in people instead of a doctorate in dentistry? Well, first of all, I think they need to be interested in it. And so that's where I think there's a little bit of, of gap <laughs> between where the, where the person is and what they need. Um, and so I think one of the things in my course that I love so much is about assertive communication. And that's a win-win. So how can you say what you need? For yourself and for, for the practice. I think that's difficult, but you need to know how to stick up for the practice because that's why you're there. You're there to stick up for the practice. I've uh, never heard that term, assertive communication. What, what does that really mean? 
Well, I think it's more like being able to say what you actually need. Sometimes it's not what people want to hear, but you know, you want to be able to say what you, what you need. So for example, can I have vacation? Well, tell me when it is. So one, t one time someone asked me at our office, can I have vacation? And I said, I don't know. If you fill the sheet out, then I'll let you know if you can or cannot have it, right? So you have to have the systems and then be able to say no. That's the hardest part is sometimes you have to say no and you have to say this isn't working for the practice, not for me, because you, you are, again, you're the CEO. That's what people need to understand. When you are the boss of a practice or any organization, you're the CEO. Um, true, true or false, women dentists say, well, if a man dentist says it, it's just an uncomfortable conversation. If a woman dentist says it, she's a bitch. <laughs> I mean, I have. I've heard that. 20 times for a woman dentist. Do, do you think that's in her head or do you think that's in the staff's mind too? You mean on with the women dentist or with the male dentist? Uh, yeah. A, a lot of, a lot of women as leaders, e even outside of dentistry and yeah. business say that when the man says that he's tough, when mm -hmm. the woman says it, she's a bitch. Yeah. Uh, um, do, do, do you see those stereotypes or not really? Uh, I mean, I see what you're saying. Again, I, I think, dentistry is becoming more of a equal ground for women and men being dentists. So I think over time that will go away. But again, you know, when you look at the companies and you look at people who are running practices, who are they? It's a lot, it's still a lot of white males. It's funny because like recently there was something on TV, on TV and it showed con Congress. I'm like, uh Oh, <laughs> you know, it's just not, it's not really a spectrum of people, but I think that's changing now. Well, you know, I grew up with five sisters, so I saw the sexism massively within my own home. Like, we lived 100 yards in the Arkansas River, and I was allowed to swim in it 24-7 and fish. My sisters couldn't go within 10 foot of the edge. And I remember at 10 years old swimming that river, looking at my five sisters with their, you know, little house on their prairie dresses on, wondering why can they not get in the river. And, that is uh, interesting. And, and here, so I have always, in my 30 years of voting, the first I voted for was Ronald Reagan in 1980. But mm -hmm. any time I had a female and a male at any seat, I just uh, sometimes I had to cover my nose. But I always voted for the woman because uh, I even did the last election. I voted for Hillary mm -hmm. because my granddaughter Taylor. I, I don't want Taylor growing up and seeing that every president of the United States was a male. Right. Yeah. I just don't like that. Even though yeah. I thought Hillary was was in it was you know I'm not going to get into politics or sex or religion or violence or that, yeah. but. But still, um, it, it is a different world. So, um, leader, um, you put up an online course with 10 modules. Where, where is that course at? It's on um, being, a, being a dental boss. And so I kind of sent that link to you. So I hope you can see that as well. Um, I, I think it's on the sheet that I, that I sent over. But um, it's basically a course that really, you know, more so than anything – I think that uh, leadership is a journey. It's just like parenting. When you first have your child, you're like, uh-oh, I don't know what to do here. And then over time, you kind of get it. And so leadership is about the same. It's, you know, you have to learn how to do things. You have to understand how to talk to people. But over time, once you experience it, it, it gets better. But I think there are certain things that doctors really need to know about when they're in their, when they're in their, their practice. So, um, is it being a boss dental or? Yeah. Being a boss dental. Yeah. What's that? Yes, that's correct. So let me see when okay, I. Okay, being a boss. Okay, I'm opening up your website now. There you go. Being a dental boss, a step-by-step -step guide to learning the leadership skills to unite your team. If my homies go to beingabossdental.com, what are they going to find? So basically, you can see here, there's a little video from me. I'm looking at as well. There's a video from me. And there's also, um, it kind of tells you what I'm focusing on. I really want, have you ever, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard or seen this show, um, The Prophet on CNBC? Yes. So Marcos Lamonas, so he is a little. Is thing his name again, Marcos what? Marcos Lamonas, it's called The Prophet. The show is amazing. Yeah, Marcos Lamonas. Yeah, yeah. Look, what, what is Lamonas? He kind of looks Italian. Um, I, I wonder in Italy. maybe he's Lebanese or something like oh, that. Oh, really? Well, I don't know about that. I'm not sure. He has think, a lot of uncomfortable conversations. I love that show. Yeah, I love Shark Tank and yeah. The Prophet. 
So what he says, he fo focuses on three things, people, products, and um, processes. So when I looked at that, I'm like, that's what dentists need to understand. They need to make sure it's very simple for their practice. So I think it's three things. It's the foundation. You need to know your mission, vision, you know, your, what you, the culture of your practice that needs to come first. You need to know your processes, your systems within the practice and then your people. So they understand how to do their work. But again, I think your people are your best resource that you have. Sometimes we don't think about that, but you need them. You need them to be, really be on your team. So with this as well, when you go to the site, you can see there's 10 modules that I had created. And I think I think they're amazing. Um, I, and again, I'm looking at this more so from my leadership perspective, but also I helped my husband in his practice for a few years. And, you know, you just want, you can see what people, what the team actually needs. Yeah. yeah um, so how long is each of these 10 modules? They're anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes. And, and, there's how, a and how much does a 10 module course cost? It costs $9.97. Nine ninety seven, so a thousand bucks. Yep. And um, each module, the length is between what? What period of time? Twenty and thirty minutes. Twenty to thirty minutes. So, do you yeah. do, now? Do you recommend that the dentist stays home and watches this with his spouse, or do you think this would be uh, best to have a uh, stabbing? I like the time twenty thirty minutes because you get an hour at lunch. You right. go send someone to go get some pizzas or subways. And it usually takes about 10 minutes to get all into the room. And then you got to kind of right. break up 10 minutes before the first patient shows up. Do you, do you think this is a staff meeting event or is this more a doctor? It could be. It could be. I would want the doctor to listen to it first because it's basically telling them how to be more accountable, how to be more assertive, how to, you know, know what your leadership style is. So a lot of people really like servant leadership because dentists, they're super, super, super nice, right? I mean, they're like some of the best people I've ever met. But also, you want to own your practice. And so some of that stuff, your, your staff knows that. They think like, well, he won't decide, so we will. So I want, this, I want the dentist to really think about them being the CEO of their practice. Because it's a lot of responsibility, but it really goes back to you. You know, it's so funny how you just nonchalantly say, you know, you want to own your practice. But all the people in corporate think that all the dentists are all going to go work for them. Right. And, and what's funny about that is then I, then I turn around and say, well, what is your number one problem? Is it marketing, sales? What is your number one problem? And they go, I can't keep my dentist. You know, uh, most of our stores, we, we can't keep a dentist for more than a year. It's like, oh, so, so all, everything I see, no one wants to work. No one, no one went to school eight years to be your boss. They right. want to own your dentist. So, so if you're driving to work right now and you're working at corporate and you're a 27 year old woman dentist and, and she's listening to you right now and she says, Oh my gosh, she goes, uh, you know, yeah. and, and the millennials are different. Like I graduated May 11, 30 years ago this month. And I had my office open September 21st, but they seem to overthink everything. They, they want to work a year, two years, three sure. years, think yeah. about it. I mean, you know, I'm old school. If you want to learn how to swim, just go to the swimming pool and dive in. Sure. Because you're not going to drown, and if you open a, and if you buy a dental office, not even 0.4 percent of those loans go into default. So, right. what would you say to a 27 year old woman dentist trying to work right now, saying, "Do you think this would help me go from being an employee to owning my own dental office?" Well, I think so because again, like the, no, you tell me if I'm wrong because you know d the dental schools more than I do, but no one talks to you about how to be a boss, how to run meetings, how to say. There's two questions I think you should say. Can you do this for me by when? That's it. You need to delegate, say, when can you do it and by when? So it's just things like that. Now, a lot of people, you know, that happens in corporate America all the time. I'm doing the project. I'll have it done by two weeks. But again, you have to follow up. You have to say, okay, I'm going to give you a, a month to do that. You know, can I and check in within two weeks. Again, this is stuff that happens all the time in, you know, in organizations, but I want, I want the people to think like a CEO so they go into that mindset. And again, so this doctor that you're, that you're talking about, I want her to feel like she knows those skills and know how, knows how to use, utilize them as well. It seems like so many of the, you, you also said that, you know, dentists are so nice, so sweet. I, I really enjoy uh, my my profession. I mean, my all huh. my colleagues have eight to twelve years of college. They're all readers. They're all 
they all chose a field to serve people, healthcare, healing hands, um, as opposed to uh, um, other professions. But uh, you know, I just love them. But uh, they 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 seem to want to have, make all their employees their friends. I mean, they just they just can't seem to have an uncomfortable conversation. I mean, they could walk in there and the, the hygienist shows up ten minutes late, and they'll say, "Oh, well, how how was your evening last night?" It's like, what what do you mean? How was her evening last night? She's ten minutes late. Right. You know, are you, are you, are you her new boyfriend? I mean, are you a boss? I mean, and the other thing I see in dentistry is um, nothing ever gets done because they'll say, well, the uh, girls up front have to do all these things. And there's like two or three girls up front. Mm -hmm. So when there's two or three people in charge, it'll never get done. But walking up to someone and saying, Kara, when are you going to run that report? When can you have it by? It's just you. Right. As opposed to just walking up to the front. Hey, if anybody gets some time, can right. someone run this report? And then no one runs the report. Right. It, that's so true. But people don't know how, to, know how to say this is what I need from you. So again, you know, when you're a boss, you tell people what to do and you want them to respond. You know, that's usually how it is. It's, it's the same way with your dad. If your dad says do this, you're like, well, it's my dad, so, so I should do it. In some ways, it, it's a little bit more like that. But again, you have to have the system so that people know what to do. Usually on a new patient visit, for example, it's about the same, right? You know, when you go through the processes, it's, it's about the same. And that's really what I want dentists to understand. You want to have processes throughout your practice so it's not so you don't know what to do. It should always be the same. Every month should be almost exactly the same. So uh, so was was David uh, trainable on this? Did you get him uh, whipped into shape or do you or, or is he doing dentistry all day while you do this? No, I actually don't help that much in the practice right now. I work more from home. But again, I'm really trying to to you know to create leading den leading dentists and to really work with dentists because, you know, I think I like the, the idea of mentoring people. And again, once I see how David runs the practice and how people respond to him, again, he's, he likes to be a leadership, a leadership person, but he's also very good at marketing and things like that. So, you know, once you get into more of the business world, I think it's amazing what can, what can really happen. So yeah, he did, he's, he's a good, a, a good mentor for me as well. So module three, build your team. Your team needs a few things, being connected to the leader, learning, systems, evaluations. Talk about module three. So I think, um, again, I think your team needs to really understand what your vision is. We need to know where we're going and how we get there. And so, you know, I think I want, I want the, the practice owners to really assume, like, once you know the vision, get your team on board. And I, I'm not sure that we're good about doing that. So if there are certain things we need to do within the practice – or if we need to know, we need to be better about asking for Invisalign because now we do, we're doing in, Invisalign. You need to get your team on board with you. So it's not telling them what to do. It's actually getting them to, to have ideas. Everyone in your practice has ideas. And usually the person who, who, who you don't ask for their ideas, they probably have great ideas. Yeah, and a lot of the uh, dental office staff meetings, the dentist does all the talking, and I, I, it's, it's a lecture. And I always say, if this is your staff meeting, then you need to stop going to your staff meetings. You need to let your staff, their, you know, um, General Patton, four star general in World War II, you say, you know, just give them the objective. Don't tell them how to do it because they'll always blow your mind at how innovative they are to do it. Just tell them right. the goal. Don't tell them how. And then a staff meetings are usually lectures. Right. I think that's true. You know, it's funny because. Uh, my husband and I were at this retreat conference this last weekend, and it was amazing because it really put the onus on the people there as opposed to me standing up here and telling what to do. So I'm like, that's how it should be. It should be more of an interactive thing. So, and that's how leadership is. You know, it goes back and forth. They can lead as well. So, in, you know, in some ways, I, there's, we're talking about here, I can't remember which module it is, but just call it a self-managing team so that they know how to run themselves and you happen to be the boss and together you can make it all happen. So module four, accountability. Who are we holding accountable? It should always be something the leader is doing, being accountable. Where do you think Dennis fell on accountability? Well, um, I think that everyone needs to say it's their fault. So um, a long time ago, I read this, this blog. It, I can't remember what it was called, but it's basically this guy was saying he was a boss and he created this um, manual for it. And he, he was writing it out and he, he didn't really like it. And then he realized, like, why am I blaming other people? Isn't it me? 
So again, like my husband used to say this, we should point two thumbs at ourselves. So if it didn't work right, work right who, whose fault was it? So start here, start here with you. And again, when you're the boss, I think you really have to look at the practice and again, we need to not make this, this personal because you were just saying that just a little bit ago, but you need to make sure you talk about the practice, not me as a person. And so that's how I think things really get done more. Start here and then see how people around you can start here as well. I think it is absolutely one of the most hilarious things about Homo sapiens that they um, spend all their time watching politics and backseat driving, you know, Washington, okay. D.C., and they're, they're critics of everywhere. And then you look at their house like, okay, you got five piles of dirty laundry, uh, your dishes are dirty, your kids are running crazy, uh, in your office, you don't know any of your numbers, any of your – I mean, so they never look at the man in the mirror. It, they would spend just 1% of the time they're judging and critiquing every, everyone else. They have no idea what's going on. And right. just focus on the man in the mirror. They never want to – uh, who was the general who said it's easier to conquer a thousand people than to conquer yourself? I think uh, that's true. And also just to say it was me. It started with me. This is what I did. So no matter what, if, and I'm assuming if it happened in my house, it was my fault, right? Because this is my house. Even if it's my son, it's still my fault because I'm raising him. So again, if, if we look at our own self, it's amazing what can happen, but you have to be okay with the feedback you get from your, from internally, we do it all the time, but how, can we get, can we do something with that? It's true. Whenever my four boys uh, mess up, I always think it's my fault that I didn't have a vasectomy in dental school. And, uh, you know, if I could just go back and you do can't. that vasectomy, I would do it on myself with it, with a scalpel, <laughs> with everything. Sorry. Right. <laughs> so module five, uh, w which we started with a term I'd never heard before, assertive communication. Communications need to be assertive so you can find a win-win. Let's discover the right and wrong ways to communicate with your employees. I love that saying, um, successful people are the ones who are willing to have the highest number of uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. There's something else in here that I talk about having, being able to create a frog. So, um, so basically. Create a what? A frog. A, a frog. frog? I thought that's what you said. And I thought she didn't yeah. say frog, did she? Yeah, I did. So the funny thing is, is that you, if you have something to tell someone, start with that first. It's horrible to, to send, well, and by the way, you know, you were late five times and we'll see you tomorrow. Don't start with that. Start with that right away so we can talk more about it. Again, you need to know when to talk to your team and be assertive in person face-to-face, one-on-one, and a team. Because sometimes we don't need to, to be assertive to people when there's a team around them. Again, you need to, you know, and again, when you have girls, girls think differently than boys do. So again, just understand the best way to, to communicate with people, but do it more so than you think you should. Because, and I don't want the dentist to ruminate too much over things. When you have your frog, just do it more so in the morning. So you just said you think girls think differently than boys. Um, if I said that, I'd be a sexist pig, but since you're a woman, <laughs> no, uh, I you can say it. But I, I'm really uh, interested in that because women are making well over 90% of all the dental appointments. Right. And they're well over 90% of all the employees in dentistry. If you were a male dentist, uh, or what, 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 what should they have? How do women think differently and what should they know about that to make them better communicators with their staff and patients? Well, I think that women are more planners. So I think, you know, if it, anyone is really doing anything with the calendar for the house, I think sometimes it's, it's more women. But again, women, the sh it's, shifting, it's shifting in who works and who doesn't work. So again, sometimes it is males that, that do more of that, that stuff. But if it's a woman, I think you need to be more kind to them and be compassionate. Like, you know, those words seem like what you should say in dentistry. But again, like, if you're kind to people and you want to know that we want to work on this together, that's the whole assertiveness stuff. We want to work on this together. It's more of a dialogue. That's a leadership term that I love is to, to be more in a dialogue. So whether that's the first phone call or when you're in the practice, it's more making sure they understand what you're saying. Um, you know, with the, um, with the brilliant idea of Ronald Reagan's free trade, when uh, everyone said, okay, it's free, but it's not going to be fair because – the governments of Japan and Korea started subsidizing all these industries. So GE just had to shut down, you know, television manufacturing. 
Um, since, since we've gone into free trade, we've lost 50 million manufacturing jobs. And so you, the data of men pouring into healthcare is huge. Healthcare is going to be 17% of the economy. I have a male office manager now. I have a male dental assistant. Uh, you go into the hospital and they're just males popping up everywhere. Uh, I think that okay. now, now half the uh, dental students are women where they used to be all men. But I really think uh, 20 years from now, uh, men might be a, a quarter or a third of all healthcare employees. Well, I'm hoping so. I mean, I think it's always better when you have both women and men, you know, in the same area working together. I think that's always great. It's and good who, too. And, and who do you think is crazier, men or women? It just depends on what you're saying. Um, I don't know. That kind of goes back and forth because women, I think, like to talk a little bit more, but I think men like to solve the problem. Both are good, actually, because sometimes you need to talk about it in order to get to the right, um, you know, well, end. That, well, we do, we do have a data point on that. I mean, the, 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 the scientists have shown that uh, women say five words to uh, a man's one, and even in, to the other species, a girl is chimpanzees, orangutans, bonobos, gibbons. Uh, they're, they're still uh, making five noises for everyone the man makes. So they are, they, they, they are. I mean, they're, they're, uh, they're more, they're, um, they like to communicate a lot more. Now, module six, a clear vision with your team. A vision for the practice should include being sustainable, team culture, coordination. So again, I really want the, oftentimes we have a vision for the practice, but do we get people to go to join with us on what that looks like? So every year we have a meeting at the beginning of the year. We talk about our vision and maybe some value points that we all want to really speak upon of how the, the year that we want to have and, um, and really to say like, if I'm great at communication or for example, I like to hug people. <laughs> But I mean, it's funny because when I'm in the practice, I can't wait to see my friends They They feel like our friends and I hug them and ha see about their family or that sort of thing. So again, it just goes along with your, um, I want your, your values to go along with the vision of the, of the practice and, and how do we make that come together? Because when you have an authentic practice, people love being there. And I mean that like, you know, I, I won't hug everyone, but still when I do that, I think it's because they know I like them. And I hope they they like me back. But you know, it's it's um, it's so amazing because these dentists truly believe that if they go to the Pank Institute and Kois and Spear and learn the best dentistry in the world, you build that and they will come. And it's just so absolutely not true. The, when when you go when I go into a dental office, you can just feel success in a second. People are hugging, wow. smiling, laughing, and, and and look at the patient. Thirty years of this stuff. They never know who did any of the dentistry. They never remember the dentistry. I'm like, who did this Who did this gold crown back here? And they say, I have no idea. I go, wow, that's pretty cool. Some dentist crawled in your mouth, did a gold crown, and you yeah. don't even remember. Yeah, and, 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 and almost every time they say, well, you did this crown on me and this filling, and it, and it hurts. And they come in, and I say, okay, well, I did the crown over here, and you're pointing down here. So they never remember the dentistry. They only remember how you made them feel. And, and the, the dentist that is pressing the flesh, hugging the patients, walking them out, greeting them, they have million dollar practices. And then that quiet little scientist in the back room doing perfect surgery under a microscope. And he, right. can't, feel, he can't pay his bills. So, so I do want to say, I don't want people to feel like they have to be someone different, you know? So I want people to feel like if you don't know how to talk to people, find a way to talk to people or ask them some questions. Again, most people, when you ask them a question, when you say, hey, Howard, how are your kids? I asked you something like that already today and you told me. So it's not like there wasn't anything that, you know, it's, it's an easy question. Tell me more about your kids. Then I can stop <laughs> and allow you to tell me about them. So again, it's not really about what we're saying. It's more about how we, the experience that we're creating. Do they feel like they want to be back there next time? That's what you're trying to create. And if you don't like to talk, find people who like to talk around you. Yeah, and and dentists are naturally introverts. Yeah. And I'd much rather train an introvert how to be a Hollywood actor and perform on stage than to try to start with an extrovert and try to get them to shut up. I mean, yeah. you know, you can't shut up an extrovert, but I, I tell every introvert in the world, and I said, you would not believe how many of these Hollywood movie stars are not anything you think they are. 
Some of them are painfully shy, recluse, uh, basically live in a cave. And then when it's lights, camera, action, they're, they're uh, magnificent. So you can learn how to perform. Disney does it. All those, all those characters are not allowed to talk because if you're a little Korean girl and you thought Mickey Mouse spoke Korean and you said something in English, you just blow up her whole, shatter her whole image. And right. they have all these little hidden doors called off stage. So when he's got to pull off the mask, breathe, get some water, go to the bathroom, whatever, they just sneak off and they're off stage. But I mean, you, you just, there's, you have to be on Broadway. You got, you got to perform sure. whether you, you like it or not, you can do it. And I love your module seven. Um, um, great job team. Your team is great. So how do you celebrate them? It's crucial to recognize and create dog with your team. I think so many, um, they always talk about an MBA school, how uh, fortune 500 companies never take time to slow down and celebrate their advancement and these guys work real hard they reach a goal and the first thing the ceo does is raise the bar 15 percent and talks about this next initiative and you gotta you gotta slow down and smell the roses and celebrate uh your victories no matter how small i think that's very true and especially you know again if women i think if you're looking more towards women women they like to celebrate you know i mean who usually parts or plans birthday parties you know <laughs> A lot of women can't wait to celebrate their son's birthday or your daughter's birthday. And again, so there's there's a reason for that, but it's also that you can feel excited about what your practice is doing. And you know, a lot of, I don't know how many how many people really get testimonials, but I mean, those are the things you can bring in and say, "Hey, Katie, good job for doing this." And someone said this about you. Now that's amazing. Yes, it's on our website, but really make sure that people understand that we love that you're doing so much in our practice, and we want to celebrate that with you. So it can be tiny, or you can do massages. You can do a lot of different things. Right now, we have is something called Girls Night Out. At one point in time, we had a boy working for us. He came to, as well too. But um, you know, really, the doctor, Dr. Molly, pays for this, and he sends everyone out. He says the next day is the best day ever at the practice because we go and do, like do painting or you know wine tasting, something like that. But it's amazing how that really gets the team to really be more united. Huh? I would like to take my team out wine tasting. I bet that'd get pretty crazy quick. Um, <laughs> module eight. Systems. Time to create SOP for your standard. Is it standard operating practices, procedures yep. or standard mm -hmm. operating practices? Yeah. SOP. Standard operating practices for your operations. Once they start working together, opportunities will develop for the team. You started with talking about Marcos Lemonis. Yeah. His three P's: people, product, processes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, systems, processes. How do you think dentists do with their systems and processes? Well. It maybe just depends on the people that you um, experience stuff with. So I think Sandy Purdue is really good at that. You know, there are people who really can talk about the processes. Um, but again, when I was saying before about how your pra your practice needs to work exactly the same every single month, so you should have time frames when you're doing reports, when you know exactly what's happening, when you're talking to your accountant, and again, same day like with your with your new patient visit, we should know exactly when they come in. Are they having a tour or not? Um, you know, what do we tell them? So again, it should be a, almost exactly the, the same. But again, it, maybe it just depends on how the people are that are working there, if they can do the practice, do the processes out how you want them to. But you have to have the team members to come into those systems and do them because it's, it takes maybe a little bit to learn up front, but once you have it, it's amazing how it can happen for you and for the dentist as well. Yeah. Um, have you guys used Sandy Purdue? We have, yeah. Yeah, so have I. Um, love her to death. Uh, she's got an amazing uh, podcast, too. Yeah, um, she... So, so you um, you started uh, a podcast. Let me get the link to it. DentistLeadership.com. That's the website. Leading Dentist, yeah. That's, that's the so podcast. My, so what's the difference if... Uh, so you have two websites. BeingABossDental.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this one is DentistLeadership.com. What yes. would my homies find on DentistLeadership.com by Dr. Kara Mallory? Well, Mal it's Malole. Malole, good job. Um, <laughs> it's really, that's the website really for me. I do some coaching and um, I that book that I was talking about before, the Where is the Love, that's on it there as well. So there's some product. product how, much is, how much is that book? Um, I believe it's 140 So it's 140 bucks for the price of one occlusal filling. Yeah. Um, 
And and how do they get that book? You just put in your name, email address, subscribe, or, or, yeah, or... You, yeah, you can just buy it. It's a it's basically a PDF that will, will just come to you. That's something you, you can share with your team. And again, that that's really based on what we do at our practice because um, it's really about I call it love because I think pe that's what people want want to experience. They want to feel loving relationships from people that are really around them. Ryan, where is the love? I'm just not feeling it, Ryan. <laughs> He's, uh, so where is the love? The 52-step dental practice customer care makeover system by Kara Malole, MSDM. What's M Master's in Science? What's DM Doctorate in Management? Yeah. That is, uh, yeah. tell David that he married up. <laughs> I will tell him. Mo oh, most technical. dentists don't. The, the women <laughs> dentists, they, that, that, that's what I, the, the most respect I have for women dentists is three out of 10 married a male dentist in their class. And the other seven out of 10 all married a man with a good job. <laughs> then I look at my male homies. Eight out of ten married the hottest waitress out of the Waffle House. Yeah, and she'll and and she'll never have a job, and she'll destroy ten thousand dollars a month until he hangs himself on the ceiling fan. And uh, so, uh, how's that for being jaded? So, uh, so you, um, I'm looking at the uh, program bonuses. Create big bold dreams for next year. Um, personalized advice to overcome your biggest obstacles. This is an amazing deal. How long have you been working on this? You know, I really just started this year. I have to, I have to give some props to my husband because he kind of said, like, I think I want you to go out and you, you use your doctorate as, you know, out of, outside of our practice. So, really, last fall, I kind of stepped away from the practice, and then um, I've re been really creating my course and setting up my, my website. And you know, I think no matter what, I think dentists need mentors, and I know there are a lot of pro programs that really want them want their team to be better but i think you have you have to start with the dentist because if you don't look at their focus and what is troubling them or what they're what's difficult for them you can't get past it with with the team i think it's good to work on both at the same time so what is your podcast your podcast called leading dentist Mm -hmm. And is that on your website? Is it on iTunes? It is, it is on the website. You can look at it on there, but it's on iTunes as well. Did you load it onto Dental Town? No, I just realized it wasn't on there. Oh um, my gosh! Oh. I, I got it. I'm so proud of that because the reason I started podcasting is because um, you know, I did the first post on Dental Town in '98. Now, mm -hmm. you know, um, quarter million dentists I've posted five million times. I did the first blog. I did the first online. I just start the genre. And mm -hmm. so I started the uh, podcasting genre, and now there's 39 podcasts on there, including your husband. And yeah. look at this. The Dental Success Blog with Mark Costas has 79,000 views. Um, how to Open a Dental Office. Check this out. How to Open a Dental Office Blog has 673,558 views on Dental Town. Podcasts are huge they're killing radio why right. would you want to commute an hour to work and listen to 30 minutes of commercials and then a few songs that you have better ones on your smartphone and uh blogging is just uh huge in fact uh i'm just uh um and and and, and no one wants to listen to the same person every day i mean there's probably people that if they heard me one more time they'd jump um you know so i'm just I so say my my podcast is on Wednesdays and it's only like five or six minutes. So it's very, it's kind of tiny, but it's leadership tips that you can kind of utilize. So that's what it is. So, yeah. So you have, um, um, create a customer friendship versus boundaries, emotional intelligence, critical thinking. It's a process. Do good connections, details, training to foresight, vacations. Are you waiting? Networking, leading dentist conversation with Fred Joyle. Um, I mean, you had Fred Joyle on your podcast before me. <laughs> at this point. Oh my God, Ryan, delete the podcast at this point. No, I love Fred. I love him so much. Uh, leading dentist, uh, leading dentist dedication, leading. Have you had your husband on your show? That's what I want to know. And I should, I should you do have that. You have not had your husband? I have not. Have you had Fred Joyle? <laughs> so why is your husband and myself still talking to you? I can't figure this out. Are we? I are David and I so low self-esteem that there's no <laughs> amount of abuse that we uh, just don't keep taking? So, um, 
So I, I think the genre, you said your podcasts are, how long are they? Five to five or six minutes. They're that. pretty tiny, but you know, I, I just want people to understand what leadership kind of looks like. It's a journey. Leadership is a journey. So you have to assume that, and you can, you can see leadership everywhere you go. Like if you're in the airport, you can see when people are leading correctly, you know, you can see it. And it happens when, when airports, you know, when things happen in airports, you can see when it goes good and when it doesn't go good. So no matter where you are, if you want to be a leader, just look around you and see what's happening. You, you can learn from good and bad mistakes, no matter what. Like oh, both ways, you can learn how to be a leader. Well, you know what I'm thinking is uh, next year, uh, we just had our 15th annual townie meeting last week in uh, Vegas. That. And yeah. we're, we're done with that run because um, basically two, two things are playing. The millennials don't think um, going to a casino with smoking and gambling and martinis is uh, as fun as Orlando. And then number two, the density. Three out of four Americans live east of the Mississippi River, and it's so oh. far for three out of four dentists to get all the way to Las Vegas. So we're going to have it in Orlando. Uh, but if you and your husband both have a podcast, uh, you you guys should uh, you should lecture there next year. You should have a uh, – um, um, I, I, I think that would be uh, a really good lecture. Um, I love to lecture there. Actually, I is, like to speak a lot. I think it's fun. Do you, does your husband? Does he like to speak too? Yeah, yeah. He's really in the last year. He's been speaking like quite quite a bit. He's good at it too. He's good because he'll tell you stories that mean something. So yeah. And where, where's he speaking? Dental societies, dental meetings. Where? He spoke. Um, let's see, in Nashville. There's a podcasters. What uh, what is it called? Um, for the podcasters, there was a, a, a yeah, there was a sh there was a, a an event in Nashville. Um, yeah, that's what it was. He spoke there, and then he spoke at maybe one other thing um, with Jamie Amos. He spoke there. He and I spoke there together. Um, so yeah, yeah, I was I. They wanted me to speak there, and I wanted to, but they usually book me to speak um, usually like a year in advance. So I was speaking in Tulsa, sure. Oklahoma that day, okay. and uh, I think they threw it together. I think they gave me about a three months heads up, but. Yeah, um, that's uh, it, it's always uh, so fun uh, when you think you're uh, helping someone along with their journey. So, um, what, who is your who is your um, th these these homies are trying to work? Who who is your best customer? Who who are you helping the most? Is it the young dentist, the old dentist, the you know who who is your best customer? I think it might be everyone because and you've been in dentistry for a long time, but I think in leadership you can always learn something from someone, for example. So there was a guy, I'll mention his name, his name is Bob Vanerak, so he used to live here in our, in our area and he's an amazing guy and um, he had a house here and I was talking to him, I, he, I used to, he used to be uh, involved with the Vail Leadership Center and so I was saying to him, I said, I can't wait to learn something from you and he said, I can't wait to learn something from you. So I think, you know, even if you feel like you know what you're doing, I think if you assume you don't know anything and see what can happen, and this is with your staff, this is with, you know, leaders like you that people are looking at, I think if you assume you can learn something, no matter your age or whatever, I think you can always be a better leader. But again, I really want the, the dentist coming out of, of um, dental school to, to get into what they need to be in order to be a great leader. And do you think they're covering that in dental school these days? I don't think so. Are you, do, are they, do you know that? Um, I, I don't think that, but I, I think the one greatest change, first of all, I, I don't like it when uh, people throw dental schools under a bus. Cause I couldn't imagine taking a hundred kids off the street and in four years, turning them loose with a license to root canals and crowns. Cause the dental students always graduate and complain they didn't learn anything, but they did. And they have a license. Uh, but I, what I, proud of the most is that 30 years ago all the dental schools were like a boot camp a marine deal i mean they just purposely went out of the way to make your journey difficult because that was the army navy marine dental school mentality and now so many of those dental schools their leadership at yeah. like uh, jack dillenberg at at still like art dagoni might have blazed the trail at up where they're starting to realize that these are our future alumni these are our future colleagues let's 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 start showing them some decency, some love, some respect. So at least, at least the the amount of dysfunction in a dental school is down. I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll say this candidly. I mean, when I was in dental school, there were kids in my class that if they could have killed the dean and got away with it, they would have done it. Hmm. I mean, the only reason they didn't is because they were afraid they'd get caught and go to jail for a long time. Now, now you have 
people who actually walk into the dean's office and shake their hand, go to lunch, you know, have dinner. I mean, you know, it's it's so it's a lot more fun and humane in dental schools these days. I think that's a huge well, generational change. And I think though, I think there's a, my husband went and spoke to the CU, um, CU, I don't know if they have like a little, like a mastermind group or something like that, more about or, around business. And they asked my husband to come and speak based, but because of the, um, Relentless Dentist podcast. And so that was really amazing because they wanted to know more about leadership and how we th can think more about the business. Because again, uh, there's two things you do need to be great at. And this is what you learn in dental school, how to be a clinical dentist. That, this, is where, this is where you're good. <laughs> but then you have to be a, a leader as well. If you're going to own a practice, you need to have those two come together. And, and, if you, and if you're a really great dentist and you have no leadership skills, uh, then you really should go work for someone else. I mean, so I many people, true. so many yeah. people say, do you think I should own? And I, and, and I love how you started. And I said about this, uh, and I said, you know, how do you, how do you get them to learn the people stuff? And the first thing you said is, well, they got to be interested. I mean, yeah. you can lead a horse to water. You can't make them drink. I mean, you know, the minute you discover this is important and you're interested and you want to be a better leader, you want to be a better boss. Just the minute you acknowledge it and want it, you're on, you're on your way. And yeah. the, the people that don't acknowledge it, they just want to come in, do their root canals after, after each one, go back in the private office and shut the door and at five o'clock go home. They really should be associates. And I, and I, I could give you the name of a hundred associates who made, you know, 225 a year working for someone for 10 years, but then they decide they uh, want to own their own business. And now they make 145 because they, they, they don't, they, they haven't even got to the point where um, they haven't even recognized yet that they, they need to be a leader. Well, I feel like people around you will tell you that if you have a dialogue. Let's go back to that word because, again, you want people to tell you if you're good at things or, or if you're bad at things. So, so maybe don't ask that directly, but just say, hey, if you guys have some insight for me on how I can be a better leader or how we can be, how our meetings can be better, you know, should I always run them or not? So you can ask those questions questions and the people will tell you what they're thinking but you have to be able to communicate that more back and forth my uh, my staff have told me what they think of me so many times my eyes are immune to pepper spray it is really amazing you can just like mace me right in the eye and it's like so they're good they're good at it's talking like sailing. To you. it's like sailing uh yeah uh, so um you um when, when you talk about on your modules that you're um on your if you go to beingabossdental.com and buy your workshop, it's three major areas of focus, foundation, systems, people. Do you, what, what would you give the grade of the average dentist right now? I mean, do you think, where, where do you think their weakest area is? I mean, what grade would you give the existing dentist that you know on uh, foundation, systems, and people? Um, where, where, where do, you, do you think they're all equally, what, what grade would you give dentistry? the sovereign profession of dentistry? It's probably, I assume they're probably somewhat in the middle. So meaning that maybe they understand their foundation, maybe they have a mission statement, but do you act upon that? That's two different things. It's good to have a mission statement, but do you act upon that? So we have a mission statement and there's two words that I love, trusting friendships. So a long time ago, we created this before Dave really created before we started our practice. But now we hire that way. We want our staff to have trusting friendship. So it's those two words really are the foundation of our practice. So I think people are good at that. Maybe people like systems because I think dentists are a little bit more engineer like they want to know here, here, because that's what happens when you do stuff in the mouth. It's this, this, that, you know, same way. So maybe systems are maybe good. And maybe some people are not good at that, but love their people and they have a way to really interact with them and be very charismatic, you know, within the staff and within with, with their patients. So I would say maybe 30% <laughs> is maybe where, where practices are, but um, I want people to get a little bit more and, and make it easy. It's not hard to do. It's just, you have to take time into making sure you can go on, on those three, three really sections. I think that's so genius how you fell, found, not fell, but found uh, the word trusting because it's so obvious women make all the appointments Women have huge trust issues. When they go to the store and buy bottled water, it's transparent. They know what it is. But when the air conditioner repairman shows up in the house and says, I can't fix your air conditioner. You need a whole new one. What percent of women say, I don't even believe you. I just think you're trying to sell right. me a new air conditioner. 
uh, right. when they go get an oil change. And they say, yeah, we did the $20 oil change, but you need to change your transmission fluid and get an air filter. What percent of the women don't trust them? Yeah. All. So when, so when somebody walks up to you and says, Kara, you have two cavities. I mean, I mean, what, what, what do you, how do you know? And it's all comes down to trust. Yeah. And if your if your staff doesn't trust you and each other and your patients don't trust you, they're not ever going to buy something invisible if they don't trust it. Yeah. And uh, that's why I want a word of mouth referral and keep an existing. Pa I'd rather spend money on loyalty to keep my existing patients and get word of mouth, because when I advertise and I get Shirley to walk in cold off the street, doesn't know anybody. And you tell her she needs to change her transmission fluid, get a new air conditioner. And she's got three cavities. She turns around, and walks out the door. You, you know, so the trusting is everything. How do, how do you think dentists um, could be better at gaining trust with their staff and, and employees and patients? Well, I think, you know, really in our office, my husband is really good at, um, this is what he says about kids. He always says, you have to look at their mental health before you look in their mouth. So what's happening here? Do they need to be sedated or not? We don't want to make, um, instances where later on they're like well dr maloli he did or, you know that happens that's what happens to adults when they come in and say i don't like the dentist because this happened when i was four when i happened when i was five so that's with kids but what happens with kids happens with adults too you have to be able to trust what's going on there sometimes my husband will say let's wait on this we're not going to do everything let's start over here and then we'll go forward with this together so it's more about Again, it's a dialogue, it's a communication style. It's about, you know, uh, my husband likes to say, I wanna know four things about the person before we go here. So say their name, what they do, what they like to, we live in a resort area, so a lot of people like to ski or maybe their, their son skis. So again, it's about the person first. So yes, they're here because they want to have their teeth worked on, but by a person they, they, that they love and kind of like. People like to like their dentist and they'll tell you when they don't, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> you, you said you wanted to um, move to uh, uh, Vail, Beaver Creek to have a more European way of life. And I see that in his four questions. You were saying name, occupation, uh, that stuff. You know, in my practice, I'm in Phoenix. You know, mm -hmm. I always, I want to know four things too. I want to know their name, their occupation, what they served time with for, uh, what prison they were in. Uh, if they have any uh, prison mates, they could refer to our practice. So, so how is how is Vale and Beaver Creek a more European uh, life? Um, it really, well, I don't know. Maybe just the people like to vacation here, and so there's a little dip, a little different mindset when you're on vacation. People like so sometimes when you move here, people like well, don't live in Vale and Avon because there's a lot of um, tourists. I love them because most people are very smiley when they're on vacation, right? Everyone loves to be on vacation. So that's what I love about being here because people want to be here and they sometimes they don't even care what money they spend because they're on vacation. And so I think this is a little bit more, I think um, Europeans are a little bit better about the work, the, the, the fun stuff as opposed to the, to the work hard stuff. We're not you know, good at that in America. <laughs> you know, half of America, it seems like I could divide the country into two groups. Half of them, when you say dentists, go into fear. I don't want to shaw. Don't drill on me. I, don't, I, don't, I just don't like that. And the other half are fear of money, costs, insurance, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And you live in the most famous state for the legalization of recreational marijuana. Um, yeah. do, do, you, do you think, uh, I, I, I keep wondering if who will be the first dentist in Colorado to market that to say, hey, are you afraid of the dentist? Come into my office and eat a medical marijuana, brownie, cupcake, whatever you do down there. Uh, do, do, do you think that's around the corner or do you think that's not? And you think that's a really, really bad idea? I've never thought of that, but I think a lot of people medicate with that before they come in. Sometimes you can smell it so they, you can, in, in some ways that's okay because it's, it's legalized, so it's fine here. It's fine in Colorado. Um, so I've never thought about that. I'll have to ask my husband about that. Yeah, and, and you wouldn't be able to smell an edible. But, yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> I, I remember when I first got out of school, um, I, I couldn't figure out what this uh, this acetone smell was. And I didn't know if they had kidney disease and liver. And I'm asking all these health issues because I'm like, man, I'm smelling like ketones or acetosis or something. Finally, this older doc said, dude, they're drinking before their appointment because they're scared. What right. you smell yeah. it is they had a couple belts of whiskey or vodka. 
Mm-hmm. And then it's like, ah, how did I not think about that? But uh, so how long has medical marijuana been uh, legal there? Oh, legalized. It's been a long time. I think we were one of the first states to do it. Was it like five years or more? I'm not sure. And so, it's been so what, is, what, is, what is your thoughts on that? Do you, do you think uh, that that's working there? Or do you think um, we just had uh, at this last presidential election, I think seven more states voted on it. And I live in Arizona. It was the only state that voted it down. The other six mm-hmm. passed it. But do you think it's a good idea or do you think it's a really bad idea? Well, I don't know that much about it um, in terms, I know it's not good for kids. That's what you kind of hear. I don't know that much about it, but you know, I think in some ways I don't, I don't feel like there, there's a lot of issues with it, you know, in our state, I don't do it, but you know, I don't believe that there's a lot of issues with it. I haven't heard of that here in, in our County, for example, cause you usually kind of know what's happening in, in the, in the media or that sort of thing with, um, with the police stuff. But I haven't really heard that much about that. So I don't know. In some ways, I wonder if we're, if America will be like, everyone will have to kind of go down that path just because it's working. And again, there's money that's coming back within our state because of it. Yeah. You know, um, I used to think during college, I thought this a hundred times that, that, you know, on the weekend, if the boys went out and drank beer, they wanted to chase women. And they go to dancing bars on that. If they drank the hard stuff like whiskey, they got in fights, fist fights, bunch right. of holes in walls, red cars. If they smoked pot, they stayed home and watched cartoons and ordered Domino's pizza. And I always thought it was so weird that the whiskey stuff, in, in my in my 54 laps around the sun, it's the hard liquor that causes True. most all the carnage I see. Yeah. And I like like if somebody's on, on a bottle of whiskey, they're driving 80 miles down the street and hit a telephone pole. If yeah. they're on weed, they're driving four miles an hour with their hands at 10 o'clock and two o'clock. I mean, you know, uh, I, I just thought I just think boys do the worst on the hard stuff. Yeah. And uh, the easiest on that other stuff. Um, yeah, I don't do it either. But uh, um, I'm sure if I went in, in Ryan and Zach and Greg's room with a magnifying glass, I could probably find something. <laughs> I, I could uh, I could try it. Uh, so um, back to your three major areas of focus for your being a boss dental module on foundation systems and people, which would you think of prioritize those of what do you think is the most important? If, if you had to get a um, map, what would be the most important foundation systems or people? If you could arrange them in order of most to least importance. I think you have to have a foundation. And again, you know, when you're building your house, you have to have a great foundation in order to build up. So I think it's just, it's like um, gum disease, right? You have to make sure down here is okay for your teeth to to be okay. I think it's the same way. And you need to know what your mission statement is and you need to act on that. You need to know what your values are and how you you can act those out. So I think your foundation is first and you can always go back there. If things aren't working out, you can say, are we not right on our, on our mission statement is not working now. And you can like, look at that together. And, and, and the, you know, the, the common people person I always see on Dental Town, the, the common question is, uh, um, you know, the, the, the patients love this hygienist, uh, but she can't get along with the assistant. Uh, the dentist is afraid of her. Um, you know, how um, do, do you think if they did these modules, they would become better at uh, dealing with their staff and these uh, organizational management HR issues? Well, I hope so, because I want people to really understand what they're doing, what they're not doing. Um, But again, you have to be willing to say to the person, the patients love you, but it's hard with the staff. How can we figure that out? It's a question and ask the person because they know, too. They know what's happening to them. They know what they're doing. (laughs) It's just a matter of you holding them accountable for what they're doing. And the last thing I want to say, I can't believe it's been an hour. Uh, you're an amazing guest, but I, you know, I've said this to my homies a million times. And again, I've done this for 30 years. Dentists don't blink at spending $150,000 on a CAD CAM machine, $100,000 on a 3D CBCD, you know, $80,000 lasers. I mean, they are flying clear across the country in a $500 plane ticket and staying at some resort while they're going to some, you know, this, uh, some post-grad uh, course that's, three, four, five thousand dollars a weekend. And then I look at all the return on investments of that. Then I go back to the soft stuff, like just getting a consultant. Just getting a consultant. That's always a every time measurable, every dollar you gave her, she gave the dollar back and you might have got another one. 
and it's right. all measurable within this quarter, this half, and they never want to do it. And here you have this amazing course. It's it's a thousand bucks, and the dentist is like, ah, I don't know, that's a lot of money. Then you come <laughs> by. Well, do you want to buy an eighty-five thousand dollar laser? Hell yeah, hell yeah. Does it got a shiny a shiny light on it? Does it have some knot? I mean, they just always every time they have a problem, they think that if they go learn how to make another dental recipe and they make dental lasagna, it's going to solve all their problems. And I'll tell them a million times: get your house in order, get it poised for growth, get your foundation, get your right people on the bus, um, get your right you know, your process, everything you're talking about, that is the most important thing. And I just want to end on this. Um, these dental schools, these lack of curriculums, ways that you and David can help is with 56 dental schools in just the U S and, you know, hundreds around the world. Um, um, I I'm, I'm Skyping into them now. You don't want to drive there fly, but these, yeah. once these instructors know that um, next Tuesday at nine o'clock on their, on their their business class or whatever that you'll you'll Skype in. I, I just think it's amazing. And uh, I would I, love to do that. I would love to do that because again, it's about being mentored and having someone on your team. And that's the hardest part when you're the, the boss. Sometimes there, there's no one really on your team, and maybe your spouse doesn't want to hear about it all the time. So find someone to be on your team because it's real. It's your practice. You want to make it as excellent as you can. Yeah. Well, I think you're amazing. I think Thank your husband you. is amazing. Tell your husband. Thank you for being the father of uh, the Dentistry Uncensored podcast and the podcast <laughs> section on downtown because I was his first yep. guest. I didn't even know what it was. You didn't. And, and I, 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 the only reason I did it was to start. I mean, my, my, my deal is user-generated content. I want right. people to get, I mean, dental town is where no dentist ever has to practice solo again. I want the dentist to go on there and solve their own problems and work together. And just like a staff meeting, I want them all to talk. And now that there's 39 podcast shows, I often think I should wrap mine up and not uh, not crowd out the space. I mean, I love uh, these podcasts. Um, the uh, the um, the feedback from podcasts is so amazing from the dental students and the millennials. It seems like they all have an hour commute to work, or they're right. healthy and they do an hour on the treadmill or the bike or the stairmaster, and they just love. They, they they say I never listen to not just my podcast but anybody's podcast. Where after an hour of listening to me or the Relentless Dentist, um, they, they got three good ideas that they're right. pumped up and psyched and, and ready to go do it. And, and I like the fact that yours are really clear and succinct. I mean, if they're only five minutes, it's right to the, right to the chase. Right, it so, is. So can my homies expect to uh, tomorrow, instead of listening to my short, fat, bald butt, that uh, they'll be able to start listening to your uh, podcast on the Dental Town app? Yes, absolutely, yes. All right. Tell your husband uh, he's a lucky man. And thank you thank so you. much for coming on my show. And shoot me an email, Howard okay. at dentaltown.com, at what you want me to push out on social media. If you have a specific okay. post sure. uh, for, because uh, you have two things. You have the, the um, you have the being a boss dental, uh, thousand bucks, uh, the, that deal. So that post, and you have another one for that, uh, uh, show me the love, which I want you to send to okay. Ryan. So okay. he'll uh, so he'll show his dad more love. Ryan, will you read it if she sends it to you? And uh, so send me whatever, whatever exactly how you want me to post on uh, Dentaltown, Thank Facebook, you, Twitter, Howard. LinkedIn, and I'll push it out today. Let me tell you one thing. I think it's lovely how you support the dentist and me as well. Like that's amazing to get you know some some props from Dr. Fran. So thank you. Ah, uh, the honor and privilege was all mine. Have a great day. You too.